Lecture 6.3, Day 1, Integration by Parts. And here we have a shot of the Badlands in South Dakota. Start with a product rule. ddx uv equals du dx times v plus u times dv dx. We can eliminate the dx's and get duv equals du v plus u dv. If we reverse du v and then subtract it from both sides, we get duv minus v du equals u dv. Now switching n for n's, we have u dv equals duv minus v du. And we can integrate both sides, giving us integral of u dv equals integral of duv minus v du. Then we split the right side into two integrals, giving us integral of u dv equals integral of duv minus integral of v du. However, the integral and the derivative in this term are inverse functions. So we get the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. This is the integration by parts formula. When using the integration by parts formula, u differentiates to zero usually and dv is something that's easy to integrate. The integration by parts formula is a product rule for integration. Choose u in this order, L-I-P-E-T, or Lipet, which stands for logs, inverse trig, polynomial, exponential, and trig. Example, the integral of x times cosine x dx. Because the integrand is a multiple, we try integration by parts. So the formula is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And we use Lipet to help us decide what to use for u. x is a polynomial factor. Polynomial comes before trig and lip it, so we'll let u equal x. So what's left will be dv. dv equals cosine x dx. Now on the left side, we take the derivative of both sides and get du equals dx. In the right-hand expression, we take the antiderivative and get v equals sine x. Then using the formula, we substitute in and get x times sine x minus the integral of sine x dx. We know how to find the antiderivative of sine x, so my answer is x times sine x plus cosine x plus c. Don't forget the plus c at the end. Another example, the integral of x squared e to the x dx. It's a product, so we try integration by parts. x squared is a polynomial factor, so we let u equal x squared because polynomial comes before exponential. What's left, e to the x dx, becomes dv. 
So du equals 2x dx, v equals e to the x. Using the formula uv minus the integral of v du, we substitute in and get x squared e to the x minus the integral of e to the x times 2x dx. We can factor out a 2. And then we see that we're taking the integral of a product again. So we need to use integration by parts again. We let u equal x because polynomial comes before exponential in lipid. dv equals e to the x dx. So du equals dx. V equals e to the x. And we use the formula again. We have x squared e to the x minus 2 times the quantity x e to the x minus the integral of e to the x dx. The antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So I get x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x. The negative signs cancel, so I get plus 2e to the x, and then plus c. And another example, the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Lippet tells us that exponential comes before trig, so we'll let u equal e to the x, and what's left becomes dv. dv equals cosine x dx. So du equals e to the x dx. v equals sine x, because the antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. Using the formula uv minus the integral of v du, we get e to the x sine x minus the integral of sine x times e to the x dx. Once again, we're still taking the integral of a product, so we'll use integration by parts. We let u equal e to the x, dv equals sine x dx, du equals e to the x dx, and v equals negative cosine x. Using the formula, e to the x sine x comes straight down. So we have minus e to the x times negative cosine x, which is uv, minus the integral of negative cosine x times e to the x dx, which is v du. Canceling negative signs, this becomes e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Now it seems like we might be going around in circles because this is the expression we started with. However, we can use that to our advantage. We move our original expression down in front, giving us the integral of e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. So we've moved this integral over to the left hand side and we get 2 times the integral of e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. Now all we have to do is divide both sides by 2 and add a plus c and we get our answer e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x all over 2 plus c. This is called solving for the unknown integral, which I find mildly amusing because it seems like they're all unknown before you start. That's, that's what this is called. 
It works when both factors integrate and differentiate forever. A shortcut, tabular integration. A very cool shortcut, actually. I think you'll like it. Tabular integration works for integrals of the form integral of f of x, g of x, dx, where f of x differentiates to zero in several steps, and g of x integrates repeatedly. Actually, tabular integration will work for any integration by parts problem. It just works to best advantage with these situations. Let's try the integral of x squared e to the x dx using tabular integration. So here's the table for tabular integration. I'm going to label the top left f of x and its derivatives and the top right g of x and its integrals. Although after this first example, I'm not going to put this label in again. We let u equal x squared because x squared is a polynomial function and polynomials come before exponential functions in Lippitt. So we have x squared. The derivative of that is 2x. The derivative of that is 2. And the derivative of that is 0. And what remains is e to the x. The antiderivative of that is e to the x, and the antiderivative of that is e to the x, and we do it one more time and get e to the x. We stop when we are straight across from the zero. Now the signs are going to alternate, so we start with a positive and put in plus, minus, plus. By the way, this is my little improvement on tabular integration. The book puts the plus and minus signs between the columns, which I think is more confusing. Now, the integral of x squared e to the x dx can be read right off the table. We start with x squared times e to the x. Then we have minus 2x times e to the x. Then plus 2 e to the x. And finally, plus c. Compare this with the same problem done the other way. This is easier and quicker to do with tabular integration. Another example, x cubed sine x dx. We have x cubed, 3x squared, 6x, 6, and 0. Once again, we chose u to be x cubed because polynomial comes before trig. On the right-hand side, we have sine x. Then the antiderivative of sine x, which is negative cosine x. The antiderivative of that, which is negative sine x. The antiderivative of that, which is cosine x. And finally, the antiderivative of cosine x, which is sine x. We put in our positive and negative signs. Positive, negative, positive, negative. And then we can write our answer. Remembering that we are multiplying along the diagonals, not subtracting or adding. So our first term is negative x cubed cosine x, then positive 3x squared sine x, plus 6x cosine x, 
minus 6 sine x, and don't forget, plus c. So that's pretty fast. Let's try tabular integration for a solving for the unknown integral problem. We start with e to the x cosine x dx. So on the left, we have e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. Remember, the derivative for e to the x is always e to the x. On the right, we have cosine x. The antiderivative of cosine x is sine x. And the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. We recognize the integrand in this line. The integrand was e to the x cosine x. This is just negative e to the x cosine x. So that's how we know when to stop. We put in plus, minus, plus. So we have a problem that we could write this way. The integral of e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. And we can always write the last line as an integral. So it's minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. But once again, this matches our original here, so we can add it to both sides and get 2 integral of e to the x cosine x dx equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. And we divide by 2 and add c and we'll get our answer. So I think you'll agree, tabular integration can save us quite a bit of time.